let's uh, take a look at what some of these mean. And now that we're talking about SMEs, we're asking you what your thoughts are. What are the main challenges that you face with MSMEs, with your business that you are running in the country? All right. Now, before we do that, I know you saw this uh, post that went viral. It was on Facebook and it was by Faith Mutembe. She's a young woman who is, um, had been doing business and she said she had to shut down her business due to what she termed as a punitive measure in the country when it comes to some of those funds. Now, if you take a look at just what she says she had to spend, um, you see the county single permit license at 18,500 and we can take a look at them one by one now um, on your screen in just a moment. There's the public health license and testing. Um, as you can see, these are just, remember now there's the national and the county level. So she had to pay a county single permit license, 18,500. And then um, she had to go into the public health license required for that and testing 13,000. And then there was uh, much, much more. If you take a look at all of those, we will run them on your screen real quick for you to take a look at them. She had to get certification from the Kenya Bureau of Standards at 102,000 shillings. And then there was 50,000 shillings from Kerry, which is a custom excise license. And then there was the KRA Customs Excise Bond, that was 300,000 shillings. And if you can do the math, you'll find that uh, these numbers added up quite a bit. There was another one for getting the stamp at a minimum of 50,000 shillings. She had to go to NEMA to get a license for 33,000 bob. And then she needed to get some independent testing from a lab. Um, and it's a mandatory independent testing lab and MOU at 15,000. She complained that this was just way too much for her she ended up shutting down that business and had to move to something else and her problems are pretty much the problems of many small and medium enterprises in the country now the regulatory framework they say is punitive and remains a key hurdle to success let's speak now to henry kabogo he's the managing director of victoria springs mineral water limited a business much like the one faith runs and he is also the chair of the water refilling business association he joins us now to shed more light on their tribulations thanks for speaking with us henry now you know about um, faith and her challenges are these the challenges you have faced as well talk to us about your journey uh, my journey my name is henry uh, thank you for the opportunity my journey has almost been the, been the same as like that of uh, for faith. In terms of, uh, first of all, we di I didn't know where to go to seek the license. It has been a search party where you go and discover that uh, you needed this license as opposed to the other one. Then you had to go to the, you had to visit so many places and leave your work and leave uh, and waste a lot of time uh, in terms of looking for money to invest. The other problem we had uh, was about uh, policies. We had the challenges of knowing which policies to, to follow, especially even in taxation. We didn't know what taxes to pay. And that is the same, same, same challenge that uh, Faith had. And uh, in terms of, uh, I, 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 I wanted to correct something about the caps. The caps is not 102, it's about two, it's, it was 30, 39,000, uh -huh. no, 31,900, uh, and uh, it has come to about 60, 63,700 because now it's, it's become two year license as opposed to one year right. license. Right. Okay. Um, um, Henry, I'd like us to move systematically. We'll talk about what happens in, in the industry in general. But you okay. also run your own water bottling uh, company. Yes. Um, yes. And when we spoke earlier, you talked of some of the challenges that you faced. At some point, you had to shut down. Take me through that first, and then we'll come and talk about you know, the challenges in general. OK, OK, OK. When we started, we didn't know uh, the, the licenses that uh, all the licenses that we need. So we approached Kebs, and uh, we were certified. It took about uh, 56 days. When, now, after we got the license, we thought we were ready. But uh, three days later, KRA visited us and shut us down, uh, saying that uh, we were bottling water without the license of uh, excise duty. I was fined uh, about 804,000, but uh, we later negotiated to 297. So that was a cost of uh, 
the, the course that I went through for not knowing. It was, an, it, it was a cost on me for omission. The other challenge we, we had was uh, marketing because uh, we realized that the pricing for, for a compliant company, we will sell more as opposed to what the non-compliant companies were selling. For example, we were supposed to sell water at 280 when you put in all the taxes and all the regulatory costs. But now, but now we realize that uh, people are selling at 280. So we learned that uh, there's, there were so much games in the, in the industry and we didn't know where to approach and who to, to, to prosecute such cases. Okay, so after you um, sorted all of that out, you said you were charged uh, about 800,000, you went, you renegotiated, it came down, you then reopened your business. And that's what led to, um, you know, you and others in your industry coming together to form the association. So yeah. what for you and, and your members who are about, what, 150 or so, what have been the general challenges that, you know, your membership is talking about in starting a business, running it in terms of licensing, uh, regulation, industry, and even funding, if that has been a challenge for you and your members? Uh, the first experience that I've been dealing with on, on almost like a daily basis, people don't know where to get information uh, about uh, the licensing. It's always a uh, search party. But now with the association, at least we have uh, uh, one portal where we, we, we tell, we, we, are, we are able to enlighten each other about the kind of taxes that uh, the taxes and the licenses that are required we're also able to refer people to specific uh to, to to specific agencies to seek those licenses the other challenge we had is uh policies uh policies are actually done uh down top uh, from top to down and uh, it's a case of take it or leave it but uh, we would appreciate if uh, government had uh, considered uh, to do the, the the policies from down to up uh, because we are in the business, we have the experience and we, we have a lot of to share yeah. with, with, the, with the regulators. The other challenge is uh, taxation and procedural uh, and procedural up to, uh, uh, approach of implementation because a number of us are caught, uh, are caught and seized because of taxation that we do not know about. Right. So for you, you're saying it should be um, not necessarily top down, but they should come down and speak with you and hear uh, from you. Because like you say, you're not, you know, you're not opposed to paying taxes, right? Yes. Okay. So from the bottom down. So those, and that is just one last thing, the importance of forming an association, because uh, that association was born out of the challenges that many of you faced, right? Yes. The... The important, the first important uh, point of forming an association is having a one-stop shop for all uh, for all discussion in regard to market and in regard to, in regard to challenges. And the other point is about uh, advocacy and uh, pushing for uh, for level playing ground. As we speak, we have challenges with taxation. Uh, there are people that are doing illicit in the market and that is almost bringing down the industry because there are people selling water right that is supposed to be sold at uh, 480 they're selling at 300 uh -huh. and we have reported those cases okay okay um and 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 that is uh, the importance of that thank you very much for speaking with us henry kaboga and we hope that uh, you and your members continue to have a bit of an easier time that's henry kaboga speaking about uh, finding a central source of information for all of these taxation and the regulation that is required. Um, and many of that continues to be the issues that face us um, here at this point. Um, I just want to read a tweet or so from you who is watching. Remember, we asked you whether um, what your experience has been like. Esther Kodek says the business environment is tough in Kenya. Kelvin Aussie says surviving an industry with business gurus is one of the challenges. Margaret Mungai says, I've always felt like the government is out to finish off water bottling. How do you explain the many licenses, high taxes and poor enforcement to do away with unlicensed manufacturers?